Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture in the ACG course and today we are discussing atrial enlargements. In this lecture we are going to understand the normal atrial depolarization, why P wave is normally biphasic in V1 leads and how to detect and diagnose right atrial enlargement and left atrial enlargement in the ECG. Of course, we know that in order to check for atrial enlargement, we are going to look at the P wave voltage and morphology, since we all know that the P wave represents atrial depolarization. So today we are focusing on the P wave. Normal P wave has different criteria that we need to know. First of all, regarding the morphology, it has a smooth contour, monophasic in lead 2, and usually it is biphasic in V1 in normal condition. Regarding the axis, it is from 0 to plus 75, as we know that the origin of the atrial depolarization comes from the SA node, which is the normal pacemaker of the heart, so it is going towards the left lower quadrant, and that's why the axis ranges between 0 to plus 75. So usually it would be positive in lead 2, 3 AVF, which are the inferior leads, and negative in AVR. Regarding the duration, usually it is less than 120 milliseconds, which equals 3 small square or 3 mm. And regarding the amplitude, it is usually less than 2.5 mm in limb leads and less than 1.5 mm in precordial leads. So it is shorter in precordial leads than in limb leads. These are the summary of the criteria of normal P wave. So, Again, this is the reference value that we need to put in our minds regarding normal P waves. Sometimes you may not see the positive deflection and you can see an entirely negative P wave in V1. That's a normal variant. The question that we need to ask ourselves, do right atrial and left atrial depolarization occur simultaneously or not? Of course, we know that atrial depolarization goes from right atrium to left atrium as the origin of depolarization is from the SA nodes. And so they are made to form the P wave. But right atrial depolarization shortly precedes the left atrial depolarization. So the first third of the P wave correspond to right atrial depolarization as we can see in this animation. The final third correspond to the left atrial depolarization while the middle and the main component of the P wave represents the combination of the two atrial depolarizations. So in most leads, as in lead 2, right atrial and left atrial depolarization move in the same direction forming a monophasic P wave. Sometimes they may show two humps in some individuals. This may be considered as a normal variant. But in V1, it is slightly different. As we can see here, that the atrial depolarization going from right atrium to left atrium would show, of course, positive deflection in V1 because it is going toward V1 but the left atrial depolarization as it is going away from the positive pole in V1 it would show negative deflection. This explains why we normally see V1 or see the P wave in V1 as biphasic morphology. Sometimes you may see the negative component without the positive component because the direction of right and left atrial depolarization is different towards the V1 leads. So that's why P wave is biphasic because left atrium is considered to be a posterior structure explaining this morphology in V1. Regarding in V6 we can see that the right atrial depolarization would show mainly positive P wave and then the left atrial depolarization would be the continuation. So in V6 it is shown a totally positive P wave or monophasic P wave because in this case we can see that nearly they are towards a positive pole of V6 so they will not show biphasic P wave as we saw in V1. So in V6 it is usually monophasic P wave. So regarding normal atrial depolarization, I would say positive P wave in lead 2 in V1, it is usually biphasic with positive and negative components. Let's start with left atrial enlargement. As we can see here, the left atrium is enlarged as we can see in this diagram. So what I expect to see that the component of the P wave that will be affected here is a component corresponding to left atrial depolarization, not the component corresponding to right atrial depolarization. So in lead 2, I would see here 
that the patient would have pronounced second hump with prolonged P wave duration and in V1 there would be pronounced negative deflection which would exceed one millimeter. So there would be an accentuation of the normal morphology of V1 with pronounced negative deflection and the duration in the lead 2 would be increased with pronounced second hump. This result from the left atrial enlargement. As we can see in this example in the surface ECG, here Lee 2 has an increased duration with pronounced second hump and there is pronounced negative deflection in V1. This is what we call P mitral or left atrial enlargement. So what do we can see here in this ECG? We can see here that the P wave and Lee 2 are wide and notched and in V1 they have a deep and wide negative deflection that is more than one millimeter in duration and also in depth. So we are speaking here about left atrial enlargement from the surface ECG corresponding to the normal ECG on your left hand side in the same image. So let's summarize the criteria of left atrial enlargement on the ECG. Lee 2 which show total P of duration more than or equal 120 millisecond which correspond to three small square and there is perfect P wave with duration of more than or equal 40 millisecond which equal one millimeter between the two peaks. Lead V1 would usually show negative deflection of biphasic P wave which is more than or equal 40 millisecond in duration and more than or equal one millimeter in depth. So these are the summarized criteria of lift atrial enlargement. What are the famous causes of left atrial enlargement? Of course, the most famous cause is the mitral stenosis, and this explains the name of mitral, and the left ventricular hypertrophy or any cause that may lead to increased LV filling pressure can be reflected with increased left atrial pressure and so left atrial enlargement. Now let's move to right atrial enlargement. As we have said in left atrium enlargement that the component affected is corresponding to left atrium, here the component affected would be corresponding to right atrium. So in this case, what will increase or what will change here is the P wave amplitude as it would be more than 2.5 mm in L2 and more than 1.5 mm in V1. So the duration here is not changed, the only change is in the P wave amplitudes. So in this example here, we can see that the amplitude of P wave is increased, but the duration is unchanged, denoting right atrial enlargement or P pulmonal. So what do we notice in this ECG? We can see here that the P wave are tall, especially in lead 2, 3 and AVF, and also it is relatively tall in V1. But it is still, of course, taller in inferior leads, because in the inferior leads, the cutoff point for the P wave amplitude is more than the cut point in the precordial leads, so the P pulmonan would be most prominent in the inferior leads rather than in V1. So let's summarize the criteria for P pulmonal. In the inferior leads, the P wave amplitude would be more than or equal to 2.5 mm, and in V1 plus minus sometimes in V2, it could be more than or equal 1.5 mm meter but the duration is not affected as in P mitral. And what are the famous causes of right atrial enlargement? Of course one of the famous causes is a pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary stenosis and this explains the name of pulmonal but other causes include also tricuspid stenosis as all these causes would increase right atrial pressure and so subsequently right atrial enlargement. Of course, we need to emphasize that there is another expression for right and left atrial enlargement, which is right atrial abnormality and left atrial abnormality. They are the same and they are considered to be synonyms. So sometimes it is abbreviated as RAE or LEE, and sometimes abbreviated as RAA or LAA. They are the same expressions. There is another expression called the Himalayan P wave that we can see in literature which of course is quoted from the Himalayan mountains in Asia. So what do we mean by Himalayan P wave and what does it signify? Himalayan P wave means that there is giant P wave more than 5 mm in amplitude and they are usually peaked, especially in lead 2 and the other inferior leads. 
Of course, they indicate severe right atrial enlargement, as here we are not speaking about just more than 2.5 mm, no more than 5 mm. They can occur in restrictive cardiomyopathy, tricuspid atresia, severe Epstein anomaly, or sometimes COPD complicated by severe pulmonary hypertension. All these pathologies share the same feature that there is marked increase in right-sided filling pressure and so the right atrium is exposed to very high pressure resulting in severe right atrial enlargement which would be reflected on the ECG as giant P waves. So let's see this example here. We can see very giant P waves that they are competing with the complex amplitude. These are, are, they are caused by severe right atrial enlargement. And in AVR, we can see the opposite, that the depth of the negative P wave also exceeds 5 mm. So they signify Himalayan P wave caused by severe right atrial enlargement. In this case, we should order, of course, an echocardiography in order to assess the right side of the heart to detect whether it is a congenital anomaly as in Epstein or tricuspid atresia or it is an acquired disease like in pulmonary hypertension or restrictive cardiomyopathy. Let's move to another question. What do we expect to find in patients with both right atrial and left atrial enlargement? Of course, in this case, I expect that both amplitude and duration are increased with prominent negative component in V1. We can he say here that we have combined features of left and right atrial enlargement or abnormality in ECG. So, instead of these normal morphologies, we can see pronounced increase in the duration and amplitude of P wave. So, in Lee 2, the duration is increased and the amplitude is also increased in V1. The duration is increased with pronounced negative component and the amplitude of the positive component is also increased. So in this example here, we can see that the patient is having increased P wave amplitude in Li2. Also, there is increased P wave duration and there is prominent negative component of P wave in V1. And of course, we should note here that there is another feature here which is increased PR interval but with one-to-one -one conduction so we are speaking about first degree AV block so these patients have biatrial enlargement and associated with first degree AV block we should look of course for presence of structural heart disease in the echocardiography like for example infiltrative cardiomyopathy which can explain all these pathologies so what are the causes of pietral enlargement? Sometimes it may be caused by mitral stenosis, complicated by pulmonary hypertension or rheumatic heart disease with combined mitral stenosis and rheumatic tricuspid stenosis may explain both right atrial and left atrial enlargement. So let's summarize the features again. These are the normal P waves in lead 2 and lead V1, which of course are the famous leads to check for the P wave abnormality. If the patient is having left atrial enlargement, the duration would be increased in lead 2, and in V1 there is prominent negative components. If there is right atrial enlargement, the amplitude is increased in both lead 2 and lead V1. If there is bi atrial enlargement, both duration and amplitude would be increased in lead 2 and also in lead V1. So remember that ECG is the initial test that suggests chamber enlargement, but of course we will need an echocardiography to confirm this finding. As in left atrium, we can measure left atrial dimensions, left atrium area, left atrial volume index, and also in right atrium we are going to measure the right atrial dimension and right atrial area. So ECG suggests the presence of atrial enlargement, but echo is needed to confirm this finding. So at the end of this lecture today, we understood the normal atrial depolarization, why P wave is normally biphasic in V1, how to detect and diagnose right atrial and left atrial enlargement in ECG or sometimes by atrial enlargement, and we understood the notion of Himalayan P wave. Our take on message today, left atrial enlargement is a matter of increased P wave duration and accentuated negative component of P wave, whereas right atrial enlargement is a matter of increased P wave amplitude, not the duration. Thank you very much for your watching.